station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is station. I am ready for the event. ESA, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Germana Galoforo from Città della Scienza in Naples. How do you hear me? Città della Scienza, Germana, I have you loud and clear. Welcome on the International Space Station. Ciao, Samantha. È sempre una grande emozione vederti. Hello, Samantha. It's always a great uh, emotional uh, lift to see you. Glad to see you here. But it's always uh, really fine to see your smiling presence aboard the space station. We're in uh, Naples in a beautiful auditorium of the Città della Scienza, the City of Science, with students and professors who are impassioned with their interest in space. So we're here to, uh, on their behalf, extend to you a welcome. Thank you. It's fantastic to know that from down there, I can't see you, but I feel your warmth and uh, an affectionate uh, greeting to you. Welcome aboard to all of you who are following us from there in the City of Science and all of the other persons who are uh, with us and streaming. It's a pleasure today to have this dialogue with you. I'm uh, immediately going to allow the students to ask you their questions. Hello. I am uh, Eleonora What uh, studies, specializations, work experience are needed to have a career more or less similar to yours? Hello. Well, let's say that I think the uh, foundations of, of my training are three. One is, let's say, the training, scientific and training, uh, scientific and technical, engineering. Uh, you can study in some area like that, or you can uh, work in uh, an engineering uh, uh, course of study or other sciences. I also took a uh, training course as a military pilot, let's say that this enables us we we can put that in uh, terms of uh, work experience, so anybody who wants to can certainly follow a similar course. But there are also possibilities uh, to engage in uh, work experience. Scientists uh, who do, for example, engage in uh, prolonged periods of research in, uh, under extreme conditions, such as in our Antarctic bases, uh, such as our colleague Alexander Kessa did, and also international experience, the uh, uh, custom of Working, have it, of working with other people from other countries and languages. Hello. Uh, hello to everybody. Hello, Samantha. I'm Francesco Alicio. I'd like to ask you, uh, will space exploration make us an interplanetary society, or will we remain Earth-centric, in a sense? That is uh, something that uh, goes into uh, science fiction. I don't think that I have any particular uh, competency in that uh, in order to be able to answer clearly as to what the future will bring. But great things are possible, and we shall see what the future brings us. Maurizio Giovane, uh, here in Naples, I'd like to know whether uh, uh, I'd like to know whether astronauts who, when they return to Earth, forget that they are now subject to gravitational uh, pull, and I'd like to know whether they, for example, they, they might drop an uh, object that they're holding and forgetting that. Uh, uh, it was uh, still floating in the air, or thinking that it would be still floating in the air. This has happened to us. It still happens. After my first mission, I returned, and I came uh, very close uh, after a few hours, and I noticed that my uh, uh, doctor, who had been uh, monitoring me during the uh, voyage, and she met me when I arrived. Brigitte was her name. She gave me her telephone to make a call home, and so I put it down, and I made this gesture that you do in the space station, you know, to let an object uh, be transmitted to somebody else. I extended my hand that moment. At the last second, I did not release that telephone, didn't let it fall. Hello. 
My name is Karim. They have taught us that uh, plants in space are important both to produce food and to regenerate air and water and to give psychological comfort to the crew. If you could, my question is, if you could be given, had the possibility to uh, look after a plant right now, would you prefer one that you could grow and then eat it all or partly, such as lettuce, tomato, carrot, or would you rather a flower to admire for days, such as a primrose? Uh, a tulip, a violet. Let's say that I really don't have the green thumb. So I would like a plant that wouldn't need a lot of care, but which I would be able to grow successfully. But if I had to choose, I would must say, I don't know. Well, maybe it's very beautiful to have a beautiful plant so to admire. So let's say that I would not uh, wave or renounce uh, the beauty of a flower in favor of uh, lettuce. But uh, on the other hand, I love tomatoes very much, so maybe I choose tomatoes. I might choose them. Cesare Moreno, a uh, teacher uh, of, at Strada on Luce. We know that uh, students learn better in the laboratory, especially those who are having uh, problems. Uh, can we be in uh, agreement that uh, work in the laboratory should be uh, performed with the uh, further mission of helping students who are the greater uh, like likely or possibility of being in, in difficulty. Well, thank you very much for the work that you do as uh, teachers at Strada, which I admire very much. And absolutely, yes, I think that in particular science uh, should be taught through laboratory-based courses, but sometimes uh, we take, uh, learn the scientific knowledge. We consolidate them, however, in a book also and give them to boys and girls in order to uh, study them as notes uh, to be uh, ingested, it would be nice to have those go jointly with uh, courses that engage in uh, discovery to help uh, humanity and to have them have an idea how it is that science has developed knowledge and interests in the service of humanity. It would uh, be interesting to follow and to learn what uh, threads of knowledge have brought us to the knowledge that we have uh, reflected in books, and then to transmit to them that uh, the process is not finished. It's not that we know everything by, uh, by any means. Uh, and this uh, great, thrilling uh, course uh, to be followed uh, which pulls us forward. Hello, Samantha. This is from Antonio Palfaro. I imagine that any exploration challenge entails risks or hides unexpected plots to be faced. What are countermeasures that you should fear? How do you maintain control? Has there been a time when you thought you could not cope? Uh, what is the most difficult situation you've ever faced on a space mission? Uh, how was it handled? This, these are so many questions. And each one of them would need to be considered in depth. I think that everybody in our in our mind, we unconsciously engage in risk evaluations and we face those risks that we choose to face and which ones are beneficial that are also part of our identity. And so we're not inclined to discuss those. For example, to go to space to become an astronaut is a fundamental part of my uh, identity, it's the way I've built my identity, and therefore it's not something that I am going to be uh, placed in discussion within myself. So let's say that when I evaluate risk, uh, even unconsciously, the uh, benefits are much greater than the risks uh, could be. And uh, therefore, I don't know what I often do. Well, for example, if something untoward can happen, I, I think of the worst thing that can happen. And uh, within the grand scheme of things, it's not the end of things. And in one way or the other, I, therefore, I pull ahead and go forward. Ciao. Ciao. This is from Francesco Sessa and Francisco Marciano and Chiara Lazzaro. At least we've been hearing about space tourism and giving people from outside the industry the sense, the chance to spend a few minutes in weightlessness or to live in orbit for a few days, knowing all the difficulties involved in space travel, both with regard to the training needed and environmental sustainability. Do you think it will be possible one day to make space a tourist destination? 
question. Sì, penso, penso yes, che sia, I think so. Cioè, se, se questo settore si This sector, si uh, if it uh, develops also from the point of view of commercial uh, benefits, I think that uh, conditions will be, uh, suitable conditions will be created. Uh, it's, uh, this is a complex, somewhat of a complicated environment in which to be in. Uh, we astronauts, of course, have a lot of things to do. We're aware of the complexity of the environment in which we find ourselves. But if one could uh, develop a platform that could be utilized for, let's say, for tourism, if we wish to use that name, to um, bring pleasure to those, we could then develop it uh, in that regard so that it would be suitable for that sort of endeavor for uh, uh, leisure travelers, which in some way or other perhaps would not be so different from what uh, we're doing now, would not be so different from tourism on Earth, uh, for people to go to exotic locations who uh, f live out their spirit of adventure. Uh, it's a lot easier to do it now than it used to be, and I suspect that in the future there will be a development that will make space tourism uh, a viable option. Hello, Samantha. I would like to say, uh, uh, do the physical predispositions or the mental abilities, iron will, resoluteness, resilience, adaptability of the person have more weight in your work? Was it difficult as a woman to be accepted in this working world that is considered more for men by many people? Well, uh, hello, uh, in terms of uh, physical uh, conditions and demands, uh, there are all sorts of conditions of uh, degradation of health that uh, astronauts are forced to face with, even if we've talked about the previously of increasing access to space as uh, astronauts. We, of course, have a uh, para-astronaut uh, uh, recruitment program for people with uh, disabilities. These uh, stringent conditions regarding health, uh, little by little, we think, will be overcome or uh, reduced. But uh, for the time being, these requirements are a necessity. In terms of our work, we think that it, there's a relaunching. We need, of course, to remain in good health and in good physical shape, condition, so that we can learn things, uh, including uh, uh, knowledge, uh, competency. And uh, what's even more important uh, refers to everything uh, in terms of psychology, uh, rational approaches, uh, teamwork, the uh, relations among people. I'm not here alone, even though you see me by myself, but uh, we are seven of us, and we share uh, not only the work, but uh, these uh, living spaces on a 24-hour basis. Hello, everybody. I'm Martina Di Cancia. My question is, Samantha, you are a patriot, um, the idol of many women and men, and of future generations. Uh, you're assembled to look to for strength of will, an example to emulate, in order to be carried away by dreams. Uh, your face is in the books and will be in the history books. Uh, how does all this make you feel? Do you feel responsible for all this admiration and trust that so many place in you? How much does this give you the impetus to always push yourself further as a modern-day Odysseus? Well, first of all, I'd like to say, to encourage a caution, because it's very risky to put people on a pedestal, too high of a pedestal. And so uh, I think I've done some things well in life, but at the same time, I'm a human being like everybody with defects and limitations. I think that it's always important uh, when we look at a person, and there are many people I admire, to remember this uh, truth also that every human being has uh, shadowy areas. Uh, we always try to learn from people we admire to see what we can perhaps try to imitate, imitate or to be inspired with that thinking that uh, we are uh, persons who are idols, for example. I think it's important to maintain this perspective because otherwise there's the risk of thinking that people who are far away, who are on television, who are in books, are somehow these are persons uh, who are perfect. Uh, and this perhaps uh, makes us uh, uh, undervalue the people that we actually meet in our own lives face to face, from which we could learn a lot as well, because perhaps these are exceptional persons. But since we have this model of an ideal model, 
of people whom we don't know, the people that we do know, uh, as a result, seem to be lessened. Uh, and so I would encourage uh, everyone to look for our own heroes within and people to admire also within the everyday life uh, and face-to-face -face relationships. Hello, Samantha. I am uh, Zveva Jalaya. Very often in my life, when people have asked me what I was studying, and I answered aerospace engineering, some have looked at me skeptically and said, but what are you doing in space? The Earth is dying, and you think you're going somewhere else for nothing. As much as I tried to argue by explaining why I chose it and why that one expect does not exclude the other, I am not the one asking you, what would you say to these people? Why is it worth investing in space? space. Well, the space environment uh, taken overall includes all of the professions that are open to students in the, the space relation. It's a very vast uh, field. It includes so many aspects such uh, that have a direct uh, impact on life on Earth and also, in particular, uh, for the management of great major problems uh, of an ethical nature, uh, climatic, uh, climate change, for example. Uh, these refer to, uh, of course, we're somewhat as, uh, skeptical as to the uh, ultimate uh, ability to solve all of these strictly through our uh, research, but technological approaches and research uh, add value. Uh, to uh, a country's industry, uh, to keep it in the um, vanguard of the space sector. And so I think that money that is invested in space is not uh, money that disappears into space, but it is money that uh, is um, remains within our economy, within our society, and our general uh, knowledge of life on Earth. And in particular, if you as concerns uh, human exploration of space, uh, the objection once upon a time was the, uh, well, there's a desire to explore our solar system. This is something, this is sort of a niche that makes us uh, dream, but it's also important to, it, it makes us dream. Uh, it's important in that sense. There are a thousand problems that we have to uh, face, and there are problems that certainly are more important. However, we should not forget, I think, the things that make us dream. Thank you very much. We have time for a last question. Hello, Samantha. I am Antonio Gallinaro. What are the first sensations, emotions, the first thoughts that when you realize on the launch pad that you're about to leave for a space flight? Well, this is a moment which to me has a very symbolic uh, value, a very, because this motive, at this moment of uh, closing, there's the end of the entire training and preparation uh, course of everything that we've been doing uh, through much of our lives, at the beginning, the end of this adventure of these months in space that are about to begin, uh, transform us into extraterrestrial humans, this very intense experience uh, of being part of a team, of a, of a crew. All these moments of closure then open up to a great sense of pregnancy and uh, great significance. Well, unfortunately, our time with you has uh, ended. Thank you very much. It's been a great pleasure to meet you today. Naples thanks you and greets you. I thank you all, and a very affectionate greeting to all of you in Naples, Napoli, and to all those who've been following us on streaming, and again, also uh, greetings to Germano. Bye. Bye, Samantha. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you to all participants from ESA. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.